babies this year. We have two in one. They did not lay two eggs. They laid one egg, hatched it. We got an egg, it hatched here. The parents had died, so we incubated that egg. And when it got a little older, we put it in with this one because it's a really good foster parent group. And they accepted it as their own. So now they've got twins. Oh, cool. <laughs> Yeah, it did. Daddy, can you hold this? That is a big bird. Uh-huh. California condor. Peregrine falcons in 1940. 1975. And 1993. That is probably my dad in Evansville. Do the condors. Oh, wow. They disappeared. Yeah. 1910. Oh, wow. Did it disappear? Mm hmm. Yep. 1980s. Oh, yeah. So that's why they're repopulating or trying to save them. Yeah. <laughs> Both my parents are falconers, so I grew up oh, cool. surrounded by birds. Oh, you're yeah. surrounded by these birds. Yep. Well, we got some good ones. <laughs> I'll tell you. This is a. Uh, Harpy eagle.
Triper Valley. She can be found around agricultural fields all summer long. These guys are so smart. These guys are called the grasshopper hawk. And so the bulk of their diet consists of insects like grasshoppers. But uh, she can help us, or she kind of makes us do all the work for her. She will follow behind farming equipment and tractors and just catch the hopping insects that they pick up. During breeding season, they will supplement their diets with rodents and reptiles. But really, for the most part, when they're not breeding, their diet consists almost exclusively of insects. Um, so these guys really are a friend of the farmer, helping keep those pest species at bay during those growing and harvesting seasons. It's kind of crazy if you think about it. Within three months of them being born, they are flying well over 6,000 miles to a country they've never even been to. You're passing over a lot of different habitats. You're passing over a lot of different countries. Um, and while their migration to Argentina is one of the longest and most impressive of any North American raptor, it does put them at great risk because all of our migratory birds require historical stopover points to rest and refuel. Uh, they can't just make that flight in one go. And unfortunately, many of those critical habitats are being lost to human needs. Countries and borders are a human thing, not a bird thing. And so while she enjoys a number of protections here in the States and in Canada and in Mexico, um, those don't usually extend beyond North America. And unfortunately, that can leave her vulnerable to being shot or poisoned in other countries. Um, because if they are not protected everywhere, Unfortunately, oh, that was good. <laughs> She's not done yet. Yeah, Kelsey's not there to catch anymore. I'm all you got. Yeah, I know. You're having so much fun. I think Griffin here uh, is a pretty cool bird. She was actually found right down here at the bottom of this hill in the backyard of our founder, Dr. Tom Cade. Um, she came from a failed nest and she has been an education ambassador with us ever since. Um, and she's helping people to inspire uh, to love birds of prey. So I think she did a pretty good job with that today. Yeah. So the next bird coming out here today is our uh, Burroughs Eagle Owl, Oliver. Here he comes. Uh, why we have milk associated with this owl is because he has white braided to his feathers. Uh, we have a scientific name for white though, it's Alba. So why milk with this owl, I'm not exactly sure. Eagle, owl, hawk, eagle. The first is in scripture and the second is what the bird actually is as a species. So he is a large owl, but an owl nonetheless. And this species is primarily nocturnal out in the wild. He has these um, special adaptations, stronger or uh, more softer feathers than our falcons, our eagles, our hawks. This species is listed of least concern, meaning the population numbers are doing well. <coughs> oh, he is so magical, for sure. How old is Oliver? Oliver is five years old. You know, we were out in the area, and he said if you stop by, you know. Well, I'll make yeah, well, yeah, we're happy to have you here. Well, thank you. And uh, you're a famous name in this. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that is it. There it is. I'll be. Robert and Janice. Mm -hmm. She made a big hit at the. Uh, oh yeah. The meats. Meats. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. One. Piece some work. of them, I think. A tight satin blouse that was always. Oh yeah. People are gog. <laughs> 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 All right. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. That's. That's the one. Yeah. It's a rare book and very much in demand. Yeah. Yeah. You got a hundred copies. What? <laughs> yeah. There's not too many of them out there. Yeah. A lot of this predated me. I was born in 1978. There you so go. Okay. It was, uh, I don't remember when they published, well, I guess they may have the date on it. It's a date. Right, <clears throat> I would think. Oh, 1970. Yeah, so it definitely predated yeah. me. Yeah. My brother was born in 1967, so I know there's okay. mention of him playing matchbox cars with the hawks back and forth on the floor. <laughs> yeah, in here. Yeah, because it was pretty much just in the Falconer community. It wasn't, you know, published yeah. anywhere mm -hmm. to speak of. So. I don't know. 
Okay, there you go. Yeah, well, that's great. Well, I really appreciate you getting that. I, hey, I mean, <laughs> if I can't get it for the author's son, <laughs> who, who could I get it for? It's good to know. What we're doing, we're trying to digitize all this yeah. so it's available for the rest of the falconry community. I'm sure he would have no problem at all with that. Yeah. Well, we might need that in writing. Yeah, Probably absolutely. Sometime. We can do that. Yep. Yeah. Yep. But, yeah. I'll uh, I'll pass it along to him. Talk to him. Yeah, because uh, he yeah he mentioned he said he will mention your name when you go out. And, sure, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm, I'm tickled to see you. And, uh, it's a it's a nice facility. Really, very impressive. Ah, uh, well, we work at it. But, yeah. but the Falconers did all of this. Yeah. But there's no pee fund money in it at all. This is strictly a Falconers undertaking. Yeah. And that was by by mutual uh, agreement to begin with. With absolutely no dissent on either side, so yeah. we, but we've uh, we've published all that. Let me at least catch yeah. on it here for a second. Awesome. Yeah. Hi, okay. this, is, this is John Gidda. He's the nice the ultimate executive director of oh, this okay. place now. Great, he's <laughs> the man, <laughs> Mr. Archives. But yeah, I know my dad and well, my mom both. You know, went way way back. You know, in the sixties and seventies, and yeah, out there, especially in Indiana and oh, yeah. you know, the Peregrine Fund when it was early. Early on, so we're, yeah. we've been traveling, traveling around. And I said, "Hey, you ought to stop." You know, yeah, so we did. Yeah. Yeah, so we did. Yeah. Not every day you get the author's son. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Do you want to um, show them in the back there? Or? I could, I could take them back. Sure. Yeah. And we have a uh, falkgreen.org is our collection online. So if you okay. go to falkgreen.org, then in that is a uh, a menu tab, collections, and click on that. You can search our collection. Okay. Anything mm -hmm. associated with any given falconer, it'll you can search. Great. Through, yeah. Okay. He thinks that although it's copyright, his dad would say, "Fine, yeah, uh, digitize it." So, oh, yeah. yeah, I'll talk to him about that. But I'm sure he'd be fine with that because there, you know, it's not about very many copies made, yeah. so it'd be good to get it digitized. Okay. So, do you have any idea how many were made? I will find out. Yeah. <laughs> be interesting to know. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, we we think enough of it. We had a custom made whatever. Yeah. For it. I figured it was floating around in this building somewhere. <laughs> oh, <boy. laughs> I'll show you the vault. It's okay. Touch this is yes, Grayson. Pat touch. Brown, who is who is doing all the grunt work back here on the accessions and stuff. So you can see where. Are you guys doing good? This is Mr. Bottomley's son. Oh, very cool. Here's Bob's book. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's really neat. Yeah. We were in the neighborhood, thought we'd swing by, and he said, yeah, stop by and drop your name. <laughs> well, as soon as I heard bottom, I'm like, bing, bing. <laughs> Come on, I'll show you the rest of the library. My, uh, my hunting partner in Germany, uh -huh. uh, or from Germany, we hunted together for nine years in uh, in Saskatchewan in Canada. Oh, yeah, wow. And then he decided he'd give us his library. Oh, okay. That's what we've got here. Yeah, wow. Because this is the ultimate yeah. library. This guy had it all. Yeah. All the old, old ones, all the rare ones. So this is a global collection then? Oh, yeah. yeah. No, no, it's, it's all totally, and this is, this is now the finest faculty library in the world. Wow. Because we had the the English language was pretty well tagged. Right, yeah. But um, now they're from everywhere. This is all of his. And we are doing a great renovation of the of the other building uh, just to, uh, so we can display this stuff. Properly. Oh, okay, great, yeah. And so that's some of the stuff that you're trying to digitize? Yeah. Yeah. We will great. hope to eventually, but well, yeah. that's, that's the overflow okay. of his. And then... It's great, great to uh, keep it for perpetuity. Well, that's why he gave it to us. Yeah, of course. Because he had seen other libraries right. just go to heck, and he uh, he wanted to keep his intact. Yeah. And he saw in the in the 1900s and the 1800s uh, there were some really fine libraries that just yeah. were dissipated. The, the guy died. His family didn't care. Oh yeah, and they, that's a shame. Well, this this for example. There are four volumes there. Uh -huh. That is nothing but a catalog of that man's library. Oh wow! And that was was all gone. It's all been oh, wow. piecemealed out. Huh. So we've got some books out of that collection actually, but this whole wall is also what he gave us. Yeah. And we, like I said, these are strictly temporary right now. 
Yeah, these are, boy, you can tell those, those are some, there's some history on oh, these. Oh, it's, it's an unbelievable collection. Yeah. There's about 50 Japanese manuscripts. Oh, yeah. And uh, some rare, really rare old Russian books. And this is, this is our regular library. Okay. And these are. Yeah. So it goes and goes and goes. Uh-huh. That's impressive. It's such a niche topic, you know. Well, yeah, yeah. there's no doubt about it. On this wall are all the oversized ones that wouldn't fit on the shelf in here. Yeah. So, so that gives you some idea as to what we're doing. And that's just the library part of it. We got 800 of these hoods, for example. If your dad's got any notes, diary, correspondence, photographs, or anything like that. Yeah, I bet he does. We would be delighted to, to have it eventually. Yeah. Uh, under whatever conditions he'd like. It's a worthwhile life. Well, it, this is now literally the center of yeah. falconry research in the world. Yeah, definitely. And these things, for example, these are all papers. These are all papers. Oh, yeah. Document, okay. uh, diaries, right. notes, correspondence. We got Frank Beebe's uh, field notes from 1932 to 2002. Wow. In, in that one, for example. And this machine here, Mm -hmm. It's incredible because you put a hood or a book in there, push the button, and it takes a picture, and the thing rotates. Oh, wow. It takes individual pictures, and then you can show it on, and you'll see it at falconry.org. You look under hoods, and they'll show the thing, the 3D. whole thing. Yeah, it, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's pretty neat. Rotating. Yeah. It's, it's an incredible collection. Yeah, the hoods are a whole, uh, in and of themselves, they, I mean, a whole <laughs> collection, oh, yeah. yeah. I know my dad used to make them. We all did. Yeah. Uh, I, I know I made about two until I found out that <laughs> there are other guys that are a whole lot more proficient <laughs> at it than I am. So we have done these five books here. Okay. Uh, what we got a manuscript that would be of great interest to the falconry community, but only the falconry community. Right. So normally a, a commercial publisher would not touch them. Yeah. And so we have published those five, and we've got three more in the pipeline right now. Appreciate it's everything. Real, I'm just you. delighted to have you here. <laughs> I mean, Across the globe, people find passion, community, and meaning in the practice of falconry. This worldwide treasure has roots in the Middle East. One of the most passionate defenders of Falconry was Sheikh Zayed bin Sultan Al Nahyan, the founder of the United Arab Emirates. Sheikh Zayed's love of Falconry and his commitment to conservation were intertwined. As a young man in the 1930s, Sheikh Zayed traveled the deserts of Eastern Arabia with the nomadic Bedouin people. During this time, Sheikh Zayed developed a deep love of Falconry. Like many before him, he admired the Falcon's power, speed, and bravery. Scripts that reveal Falconry's deep roots in the Middle East. 